Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be more exciting and interesting because there's going to be a detailed description and a discussion about the perovskite tandem silicon solar cell. So without further ado, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the video. So this research article is mentioned that a company uh, which is called CSEM and EPFL they reveal the technical details of achieving 31.25% efficiency for tandem perovskite silicon solar cell. Now, this is a year after achieving what at the time was a world record efficiency for the tandem perovskite silicon solar cell. So the scientists from EPFL and CSEM published a paper which showed the technical features of the device and how that result was made possible, right? And they said that the key was to regulate the perovskite crystallization process, which is using an additive in the processing sequence. So the two scientific institutions, right? These two institutions, however, they didn't really uh, release many details about that cell technology and how the new world record was made possible. But however, now more than a year later, they presented the cell and the related manufacturing processes in the paper, which is called Interface Passivation for 31.25% Efficient Perovskite Silicon Tandem Solar Cells, which was published last week in the science category. Now, the team said that they took a pioneering approach by designing a tandem solar cell with a perovskite layer conformally coated on a silicon bottom cell. This is the researchers led author Xin Yu Chin told the PV magazine. So basically the silicon bottom cell featured micrometric pyramids an industry standard modification that enhances its photogenic generation. So basically the bottom layer of the silicon cell, uh, they coated it in such a way it contained micro, micrometric pyramids uh, and modifies the, the photo current generation of how the, the electrons basically in that uh, cell uh, generate. So in that process, so the key challenges that they, they found was that the recombination losses occurring at the perovskite top surface interfacing with the electron selective contact. Basically what that means is that the electrons that recombine and regroup uh, at the bottom of the, 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 the electrode or the cell, uh, so the so silicon cell, these are happening at the top surface, right? Where the electrons are, you know, their contact and the, when they're getting out of the, the top uh, junction. So the recombination is a process where the photogenerated charge carriers, electrons and holes, they recombine before they can be collected and utilized to produce electricity, which then leads to efficiency losses, right? So this is the whole definition of recombination and how that happens uh, in the charge carriers where you have on the top electrons and on the bottom holes and how they fluctuate and flow whenever there's a, a light uh, hitting on the top surface, right? So to address this, issue, we incorporated an additive into the processing sequence, which proved instrumental in regulating the perovskite crystallization process, Chin explained. This step effectively passivated the interface, effectively mitigating the recombination losses that hamper the overall cell performance. The scientists used a phosphonic acid known as 23456 pentafluorobenzene phosphonic acid FBPAC to passivate the perovskite absorber and another phosphonic acid called methyl substituted carbazole ME4PACZ to, to obtain the passivated interfacial defects in the whole transport layer HTL. So basically uh, more chemical properties and acid uh, added to passivate the perovskite absorber layer uh, all these things to uh, see how the, the chemical properties react in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the, the transport layer, whole transport layer. The cell is based on a substrate made of glass and indium tin oxide, ITO, and ME4PACZ HTL, an absorber made with the uh, perovskite with an energy band gap of 1.70 EV, a Buckminster fluorine C60 electron transport layer, a bathocoproin BCP, buffer layer and a top electrode based on copper CU. So as you can see, different layers of different chemical properties, copper, uh, and then you have tin oxide uh, and all these transport layer, electron hole, HTL, 
giving you a band gap energy between the charge carriers 1.70 EV. Now these are tested under the standard illumination conditions and the device showed that an efficiency of 31.25%, an open circuit voltage of 1.91 volts, a short circuit current of 20.47 milliamps per centimeter squared, and a fill factor of 79.8%. Now these results were all certified by the U.S. Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory, NREL. Uh, and the use of the ME4PACZ reduces the voltage losses at the perovskite HTL surface, whereas the inclusion of the FPPAC in the perovskite deposition sequence reduces the voltage losses at the perovskite C60 ETL interface and leads to more favorable perovskite microstructures with larger domains. So basically it shows how the voltage between these interfaces, the layers, the first layer and the second layer, the top mid layer and the middle layer, how it reduces uh, the voltage level. And then for the second layer and the third layer, the bottom layer, how again talking about the sequence of that voltage to the perovskite interface uh, leading to a different structure and the design of that perovskite microstructure, right? So the researcher, researcher, they emphasize adding that the outcome also indicates that the technology is preparing to advance to the subsequent stage of its development, which necessitates a central focus on stability and scalability aspects. So we have to make sure is that if it is probable that the technology will be, uh, will still need to require five to 10 years to enter the market. Existing industrial solutions are already applicable to the all thin film materials used in the tandem solar cell as exemplified by Oxford PV, PV's recent results, Chen added. The primary concern that the scientific community must address is the stability of the perovskite material. And that's why the main questions now being asked is, can these materials be rendered in such a way that they'll be stable enough to endure the 20 years in real life practical applications? And, and this is the, really the pivotal question that will determine the commercial success of the perovskite tandem silicon solar cell and the impact of this technology can have in the real world renewable energy industries. So mainly that's pretty much it about how the different chemical properties and crystallization process was under, undergo, uh, underdone in this perovskite a world record efficiency that was achieved by the scientists and how still questions are need to be asked and how uh, scalability and the stability of this material and the impact of the, this technology can still needs to be addressed and how much longer will it take to enter the market. So that's all for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what else you want to see in the video and I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.